Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Want to go ahead and continue a conversation from the weekend. And boy, oh boy, is it a conversation we have had a lot of. And frankly, a conversation that I think maybe is the most interesting story in college basketball right now. What the heck is going on at Kentucky and what the heck could be next? So obviously, you don't need me to tell you it's bad at Kentucky. And it's not just bad. It's literally historically bad. Not figuratively, literally. I know I use the word literally a lot, but it is literally historically bad. Saturday, third straight, home loss at Rupp Arena. That has never happened in school history. Overall, you lose four of your last six, and you're currently sitting at 16 and seven overall with about, what, five weeks, four weeks left in the season. Worth noting, by the way, you have to go to Auburn this weekend. You have Alabama coming to town. You close the season at Tennessee. So it's not like you're through the tough part of your schedule. It doesn't get any easier starting it this week when you bring Ole Miss to town. And so you've lost three straight at Rupp. You're trending in the wrong direction. We talked about that on Saturday. But then on Sunday, and by the way, I should mention, this isn't a one-off deal. I think if you love college basketball, you know this is really a four- or five-year trend. 2021, you miss the NCAA tournament. 2022, you lose to a 15 seed. 2023, you're a six seed. You lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Kansas State. So it's trending in the wrong direction this year. It's been trending in the wrong direction for the last four or five years. And I think the especially frustrating thing this season is that this was the year it was supposed to get right. Number one ranked recruiting class, DJ Wagner, son of Dewan, who played for Coach Cal. Reed Shepard, you go on and on. And by the way, they were good early in the air. They were good against Carolina. They beat Carolina. They should have beat Kansas, could have beat Kansas, destroyed Louisville. But now we are back to where we've been so many times, and that is just disappointment after disappointment again and again. And so again, on Saturday, we talked about the game. And on Sunday, right before the Super Bowl, I did put out a segment because I had a lot of you ask me, Torres, if somehow Cal leaves, if somehow we can get rid of him, who will be realistic next head coaches? So we talked about that on Sunday, and I went through all the names. Go back and watch that video if you have not seen it. Download uh, Monday's Aaron Torres pod. But also, it is worth noting that I did have a lot of you say, Torres, why are you even wasting your time? Calipari's got that huge contract. The buyout is insane. There is 0% chance that he is leaving until that contract is done. Don't even talk about it. We're stuck. This is awful. This is brutal. This is whatever. But what I would say, what I do want to talk about is this, because I had some of you ask me, Torres, what would it actually take for John Calipari to step aside? What would it actually take for him to say, you know what? I've had enough. We've done it. It's time for me to, 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 to do other things. And I think we're getting close, and I think it's probably a little bit more realistic than a lot of people think. And let's get into it. A couple things are worth noting. One, I will be blunt. While I think it's more realistic than people think, I still don't think it's very realistic. Calipari is stubborn. He's going to do it his way. He's going to do it on his terms. And he's publicly been asked about this. Like I think it was last summer, maybe when the team was in the Bahamas, he was asked about retirement. And he said something to the effect of, if you were owed $50, $60 million, would you step aside? He kind of rolled his eyes like, uh, you know, whatever. They're going to pay me every last dollar. So that's one. He's publicly talked about the fact he has zero interest in stepping aside with that much money left on his contract. But what I would also say is a couple things from this this perspective as well. I do think it's possible, and I know Kentucky fans don't want to hear this right now. I do think it's possible that they can turn things around even this year. First of all, the team is insanely talented, and I do think there's been a couple things that work against them the last few weeks. First of all, worth noting, it is worth noting, Um, the last three games, those three, well, not the last three, but their three game losing streak at Rupp Arena. It is worth noting two of those games were very winnable. I don't think Tennessee was ever really that close, even though they cut the lead a few times. And Tennessee is a legitimate top five team, even if they lost on Saturday at A&M. But at the same time, um, the Florida game, if you just foul up three, you probably win that game. Uh, Gonzaga. I do think the fact that Trey Mitchell did not play in that game mattered. Trey Mitchell is starting forward. He was out the Gonzaga front court. There's their four big guys combined for 66 points, 18 offensive rebounds for Gonzaga. If there was one game that you needed a veteran big man 
presence. And I know Trey Mitchell, 6'8", 6'9", he's not huge. But that was the game that you needed that guy. And so, look, I understand that sounds like I'm making excuses, but there's a difference between reasons and excuses, and those are at least partly the reasons why Kentucky has struggled of late. Still, does not change the fact that you are coming off two out of the last three games you have lost at home. And so, again, the question from Kentucky fans becomes, Torres, is it at all possible that this guy leaves? Again, he's talked about it publicly. Kentucky fans, you know Cal at this point. He's stubborn. But do I think it's at least possible? I do. One, listen, let me see, let me even say this, is that Calipari can say whatever he wants. He clearly hears the outside noise. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it is reality. You can fight me on it. You could argue with me on it. But it is interesting. Every time the fans call for something, that happens, right? Shake Coaching staff shake up. Demanded it after the 2021 season. Weird how that happened. Uh, go back to recruiting high school players. Weird how the last three or four years that has happened. Although that was that was more cow. Uh, rotation changes, lineup changes. He listens to what people say. And I do think even if he tries to hide it, even if he says after all these big games, oh, you know, blame me, don't blame the kids. Which, by the way, I don't think anybody's blaming the kids. I think they're blaming you. But guess what? At the end of the day, he does hear the noise. And I do think there is something to if this gets bad enough, I do think that he would consider leaving because he does hear the noise. And I will say it is it is getting pretty bad. It is toxic. And I think there have been times during the Cal era where the where where the loudest voices have been maybe been misperceived as the only voices. In other words, the loudest voices calling for his dismissal, calling for his firing, calling for a new head coach. I think most of those voices were the loudest. I don't know that that was always the majority. I think there's a big part of the fan base that has flipped again this season because, to use a term from a movie from from last week, it's Groundhog Day. New new coaching, you know, new coaching staff, in, 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 you know, new new staff members, new players, same results. You get to February, as I said on Saturday, this used to be Calipari time. That's when his season would flip, when he'd figure things out, when he'd get things going. Now it's the opposite. You've been really good in November, December in a couple of these years, but you cannot win as the season goes on and when the games matter. And so he hears the noise and I think he knows it's really bad. And I think this time it is really bad. I don't think it's made up fan anger. I think I would say for maybe the first time, the majority, I think the more than the majority is like, we've had enough. We've tried to defend you. We've tried to this, we've tried to that, but every single year it's the same thing. And so I do think that he hears that noise. And if it gets bad enough, I think he'd have to at least consider it because I don't care how much money you're making. If you know that you're not wanted somewhere, I think that that that's something that he would sit there and say. The other thing too, and I do think this is important, is like he has a standard himself. He's a Hall of Famer. He doesn't want to go out like this. He doesn't want to go out as a seven, six, eight seed every single year when you were a one seed, you were a two seed, you were competing for Final Fours and National Championships. And so we'll see how the rest of the season plays out. Again, I wouldn't put it at 100%. I wouldn't put it at 80%. I wouldn't put it at 60% that he's gone after this year. I don't even know how I'd put it at 40%. But I do think if this continues to go sideways, and again, they're 16 and 7. There's some really tough games still on the schedule. At Tennessee, at Auburn, Alabama at home, among them. Ole Miss at home, I don't think is a walk a walkthrough or a pushover based on what we've seen. You go sideways. I don't think they're missing the tournament. But... You end up as a nine seed, unranked at the end of the season. You don't make it out of the first weekend again with one. Listen, Kentucky's got one of the three or four most talented rosters in the country. Now it's young, but one of the three or four most talented, if not the most talented in the country. Don't think it's going to happen, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. It's getting bad. By the way, over the weekend, I had other SEC coaches, other SEC fans say like, dude, I saw those message boards. They are melting down. It is not good. By the way, Kentucky fans, I don't blame you because I understand the standard of Kentucky basketball. It's not to be okay. It's not to get to the tournament. It's to get to Final Fours and win national championships. And so we'll see what happens. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I don't think it's inconceivable either that if things continue to go sideways, that Cal decides to step away.